So Soilworks dropped by this morning to deliver a load of garden soil and scoria. I proceeded to create my mix and started filling up the planter but unfortunately right after that it started raining and we even had hail. But thankfully the weather's improved so I can get back to doing that. One of the questions people frequently ask me is, what's my soil composition? That's a pretty loaded question because that depends on a lot of factors. So let me lay them out. When planting on the ground, I usually go for a mix of one part of scoria and three or four parts of garden soil. Again, that's only if I have them in the ground. And the reason for that is because my climate allows for it I live in the western suburbs of Melbourne, Australia. We have a temperate climate and we don't have as much rainfall as places in the tropics. Although, quite ironically, it's been raining today, so everything here is wet. So again, when I have this in the ground, I use 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4, depending on how loose my garden soil already is. In case the soil base that I get is rather sandy and it doesn't drain as well, then I would just have to increase the composition of scoria. This is scoria. And I'd often go with 1 is 2 or maybe sometimes even 1 is to 1, depending on how much scoria I have. On the flip side, when dealing with pots, I go for a more scoria heavy mix. And that's mainly because in pots, pots are smaller and there's less dissipation of water. Because if you could imagine it, in the ground, water can dissipate in all directions. But in pots, they can only go downwards because the draining holes are at the bottom. And this is even more apparent in plastic pots or glazed or sealed pots. And it is for this reason that I like using clay pots, terracotta pots, because water is able to seep through the walls, which means that planting in terracotta pots can be a bit more forgiving compared to plastic pots. So if I were to create a soil mix for my pots, I would go with a more scoria heavy mix, so usually two parts scoria to one part of garden soil, especially this type of soil, which is a bit sandy. And for more sensitive varieties, I'll be using even more scoria, maybe threes to one or fours to one even. But in this case, we're dealing with a planter and with the planter, two is to one is enough. Two parts scoria and one part of garden soil. So for every two shovels full of scoria, I'll be getting one shovel full of soil.
just my luck, started showering again. Unfortunately, there's not much that I can do about this weather, apart from just waiting it out. So maybe let's just talk about what I'm planning to do. So if you've been following the entire series of Let's Plan, then you would know that I have two propagation racks. There's this one here, lightweight metal shelf, and a heavyweight, heavy-duty shelf at the back. Each shelf serves a different purpose. This shelf is supposed to be the shelf where plants are still able to get enough sunlight to avoid stretching. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Clearly, the plants here are still stretching out. So what I'm going to do is to vacate this shelf and move the plants out into the planter. Most of the plants that I have here are my propagations and they've been kept inside these plastic pots for almost a year now, I guess. I think it was in episode 21, the episode where I was supposed to get a cutting of an Echeveria Zora from one of my neighbors. And in that episode, I spent the whole afternoon just putting up my leaf pops. It's this ones and more of them on both levels here. Some of them are at the bottom. They are all over the place. Some of them are even on the other rack. Now this is the rack where I place all of my leaf pops. Actually, this is where I place the leaves and the reason I have them here is because this place does not get sunlight during the day and it is well protected from the elements. I'm going to keep this, I'm going to set all of my leaves for propagation right here and once they grow large enough, I'm going to move them out to the plant. Most of the pups here have already grown so they are prime candidates for moving out into the planter. So as soon as I get the thing filled, I'm moving them out. Looks like the sun's out again. Let's resume. I've been waiting for this. Yeah. It's been up on my mind. Oh, it's hard to resist. Feeling like one of a kind. Oh, no. Now I can work on propagation. Now here's what I was planning to do. I intend to remove all of this ground cover here on this level and move them out into the planter because I would like to propagate all of them. If I leave them in here, they're going to be crowding each other and there won't be enough space for them to grow. Once all of these are done, I'll be planting some of my excess imbricata right in this spot around the big bowl. I think the larger rosettes would make good complement against this bowl. As it stands right now, there's no harmony, they're just littering all over the place. So messy. The textures are different, the colors are different, it doesn't look like it was planned out. So by having the planter now, this is a great opportunity for me to move them out. I'll let the planter settle for now, I'll be having another look at it tomorrow, and that's when I'll start transferring all of these plants. Sponsors as Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Nino, Tika Milner, Bias, Linda Leal, and everyone else. Thank you so much for your support. The next several episodes of Let's Plant would be all about propagation, so make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss out. Let's Plant comes out every Tuesday morning my time, that would be Monday evening, the other side of the world. I also do a recap every Saturday night, that would be Saturday morning, Eastern Time. You could also check out my Instagram, that's at Seriscapades. I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.